Hello everyone, if you didn't know, my name is Andrea and I make uh, mom and baby videos mainly but then everything about lifestyle and vlogs and everyday life um, so if you like that kind of content, please subscribe to my channel, that would help me so much and if you like this video, please leave uh, a like and a comment, that would help me so much anyway, uh, in this video I'm going to be talking about um, my engagement I uh, got engaged during the holiday, we went to Italy and my uh, partner um, decided he um, was gonna propose while being in Italy because you know that's where my family is from and my friends and everyone else so he just thought it would be nice if he did it. But anyway, let's dive in. Um, the first steps and um, you know what what actually happens after you get engaged um, what happens after what kind of steps you need to take and what um, you need to set on and and talk about before actually going into the wedding planning um, so I will tell you guys what we did so first of all you're gonna be celebrating with your friends and family and uh, you know you're gonna be having to tell everyone the news whether you want to do it by posting a picture on social media whether you want to do it by calling everyone um, or calling some certain people and then uh, yeah whatever like the way you decide to tell people it's up to you and your partner um, but that's the first thing that you do so we got engaged I told the people closest to me straight away I sent we took a picture um, of us with the ring and we sent it to all our friends and family like the closest people and then of course we also had conversations over the phone but after the celebration the first thing you do is picking a country now yeah, we do live, uh, we, we do have two different countries. So like I'm from Italy and Connor is from England. So we had to make this choice. Um, but also if you're not from two different countries, if you're from the same country, you might have to do, uh, you might want to have a, a wedding abroad. You want to, ha you want to have a wedding in a, in a different country. So that's completely fine. Like we picked Italy because it's better for us. Uh, weather conditions are better. Um, prices are lower in Italy and yeah so Italy was our destination for our wedding and it was easier for us because of course I speak Italian half of the guests already live in Italy and you know we didn't have to consider covering for everyone coming from a different country but then of course you might you might want a wedding in France or in Spain or you might want a wedding in Mexico like I have a friend who wants to get married in Mexico and that's completely fine like it's up to you guys you pick where you want to get married so that's literally the first thing do you want to get married in your country do you want to get married abroad what kind of wedding and where do you want this wedding to be Once you pick your country or your location uh, like geographically and um, you're gonna move on to the next step which is the first big question that everyone is gonna ask you about which is when when is the wedding when is the wedding like everyone is gonna ask you this question and it's gonna be overwhelming because you're not gonna have the answer straight away um you know most people as soon as you tell them oh we're engaged you know they're gonna turn around and say oh congratulations when is the wedding so we had to pick a date and i am someone that wants to get straight out there as soon as i got engaged i wanted to google stuff about um you know weddings locations uh, wedding planning um check sheets uh, checklists like everything like everything is out there i just wanted to be right on top of it but in order to be able to do that um we had to sit down and, and have this conversation we had to to understand when when we wanted this wedding to be um so our process to get um our process to get the the date for our wedding was uh, of course we decided not to do it in 2022 because it was too close so uh, we got engaged on the 26th of december 2021 and 2022 was literally around the corner and um, we didn't feel like it was gonna work out for us we didn't feel like we have the energy the time and the money to be putting into a wedding so so close so we decided that 2022 wasn't gonna be our year we decided the year that we were gonna get married was gonna be 2023 
because it's the year after but you know like you guys might want to get married straight away there is couples they already have the funds there is couples they don't care and want to get married straight away they want to get to that big moment so that's that's completely fine that's completely up to you um, but you do need to choose um, at least the year um, firstly you have to say do we want to get married straight away do we want to get married next year or in two years time you know some people have engagements that last for two years or three years so that's completely up to you but you do need to pick your um, your year and after you pick your year you need to kind of narrow down the month uh, so for us the process was very easy because I said my opinion was that I wanted the wedding to be during the warmer, month, uh, warmer months of the year so theoretically from March to October I didn't want a wedding during winter I didn't want a Christmas wedding um, I didn't want a white wedding so that is just me that is my opinion that is what I imagine for myself um, so I said you know from March to October um, we have our anniversary in March so that was an option but I I then said, you know, March and October actually can still be very rainy months, very dark months. Uh, so we then completely changed it up and we said it's going to be from April to September. Um, and then from that, it was kind of easier because in April it's my birthday. So I said it's a no go. In May, it's Amberly's birthday and we don't really want to add on to that. Um, and then in June, um, it, it's gonna be straight after um, the two big months you know of my birthday and Amelie's birthday and we might not have um, the money to celebrate every year our anniversary in June but also we didn't like the fact that it was um, gonna be so hot in Italy so June July and August in Italy it is boiling um, it's probably like uh, 20 8 32 degrees like in that range sometimes it can be higher than that so we just said you know what like let's not let's not do that in Italy it's it's way too hot and um, a lot of people like that like my best friend is getting married in July and it's gonna be very hot you just have to take that into consideration and you need to consider the fact that your guests are gonna be hot and you're gonna have to do your research on how to make that happen and whatever else but you know that was us we said we didn't care too much about it being in june july and august it's high season it's very um, hot outside and we just said you know people might be also going on holiday might have um holiday with their family and friends and you know some people might still be graduating or anyway we said it wasn't gonna be our case so the last month that was left was September because of course we said no to April not to May no June July August and so it was left with the last month uh, that we had to consider which was September and I completely completely fell in love with the month of September um, I always liked September because it's at the end of summer you still have the summer vibes but it's not as hot and it's, um, it's already going into autumn so you also have that um, you know you also have the autumn vibes coming um, and the summer going so I just I just love September. September is when people are like, yeah, let's go back to school, let's go back to university, let's go back to work after the holiday, um, let's go back to the gym, you know, it's like, it's like, a, um, it's a good month. Anyway, so I liked September and we decided that that was going to be our month. So we had September 2023, which was a big achievement. We also said we didn't want it to be at the end of September. We wanted it to be the first 10 days of September. So we narrowed it down a lot. Um, and then we, of course, also said the first couple of days of September, we weren't very keen on. So we kind of narrowed it down to somewhere between the 5th and the 10th. Um, we looked at the calendar, saw that the 7th was a Thursday for that year. So we said, you know what, let's get married on a Thursday. <laughs> okay, so now you have picked your date. Um, and the next step is the one that it's harder um, for everyone, uh, which is the conversation about the budget. The budget is a hard conversation uh, for some couples, other couples already have everything planned and um, they already have their savings, um, you know, and it's not that, that big of a deal. But 
for me and for Connor, um, for us as a couple, it was it was a big deal. Like we had to pick a budget. Um, I'm not going back to work yet. I'm still on maternity leave, and I don't know if I'm going back to work. Uh, we have a baby to look after, and um, just one wage to live off with two cars and everything else. So we had to pick a lot of. We have to put a lot of things into consideration. So what we did was literally sit down have a look at our finances, at how much we can save, how much we have already saved, um, and how much we are willing to spend for like one day. Like some people are willing to spend a lot. We said, okay, so how much would you be willing to spend? I said, I'll be spending, I would be willing to spend a maximum of 30,000, which is a lot, a lot of money. And there is people out there that literally call me crazy because I'm spending so much on my wedding. But there is also people out there that makes you feel make you feel like you're you're poor when you sell them thirty thousand. Like they they're spending sixty, seventy, eighty. Like they're spending crazy amounts. So um, for some people thirty thousand is a lot. For some people it's not. Um, we then sat down and realized we couldn't do it for thirty thousand. Uh, we wanted to stay more towards the twenty mark. Um, because of our finances and everything and also the fact that we said um, you know we are taking everything in and we don't want to put ourselves into debt and we also want to uh, be able to move house and everything so we decided you know let's stay closer to the 20, uh, 20 mark but then we put we put a lot of thought into it and we said you know what people are gonna get us um, present and it's not gonna be uh, an actual gift because we can't transport it back to England so we said to people we're gonna say to people we're not gonna be able to get gifts because we can't take them back to England so everyone is gonna leave us uh, some money um, as a gift as a wedding gift so we said you know what most people are gonna be covering just the cost uh, of their meal for the day so um, they're just gonna be covering what <laughs> what our uh, what the menu really cost for us um, you know for us to feed them but most people like so but the rest of the people like close family and friends and some other people might want to put a bit more and we might actually be able to make that amount and of course we also had to take into consideration the fact that um, our families um, or let them my family especially because I'm the bride they said they can help me with buying my dress and stuff like that so you know that is a big big factor we we are lucky enough and we had to put that into consideration and we came down with a budget of 25,000 we said that that's our budget for who we are for what we do for the things that we are getting and we had to count on our finances. You have to look at yours. So um, you have to sit down with your partner and it's only you and your partner who can sit down and have a look into this. Because honestly, no one else, no one else can give you an opinion. No one else um, can can be involved into this unless they, they are family and friends, they're offering help, in which case they can tell you, you know, we can help you, don't worry. Um, but if it's if it's um, something that influences you in a bad way, like uh, I had a couple of wedding planners making me feel like 25,000 was nothing. And I'm like, 25,000 is not nothing. If you can't, if you can't organize a wedding with 25,000, then something's wrong. Like you, you can, you can have a wedding for 25,000. You just have to be able to make some cuts. You, you just have to be able to um, do it in, in a way that works for everyone. So you can have a wedding for 25,000, you can have a wedding for 15,000, like you can have a wedding for 10,000 if you really, really want to squeeze everything in. So um, having people making you feel bad for the budget that you have chosen, um, it's not good. Like if you tell someone, um, if I tell people my budget, they some people say, oh my God, that's a lot. Some people say that's not enough. Um, but you know they don't have a say into this it's you and your partner they have to put in the money and the uh, work to save it so it's just you guys they know how much you're actually willing to spend and how much you can actually spend so that it's a decision it's completely up to you don't get other people make comments about it or choose for you because it's not right it's not right for anyone um to see to see that so 
or to hear that anyway um so yeah don't let anyone judge your budget maybe even don't tell people don't just don't tell people how how much you're willing to spend don't tell people what your budget is like we literally told a couple of people and that is it i'm not gonna go around telling people how much we're spending because it just creates um this bad vibes and i don't like them so um we're just not gonna tell people um anyway once you have all of this sorted you have the country that you want to get married geographically like you know in what side of of the world you want to get married you know the date that you pick uh, and the year um, and now you also have a budget and this is great these are the first three steps uh, that you need to to go through uh, the first three conversations that you need to have the first three things that you need to establish in order to um start the fun bits the fun the fun uh, wedding organizing and everything like that so make sure you have these three things and then you can do anything uh, our next step after this was getting a wedding planner but if you're not getting a wedding planner your step can be looking at locations and vendors and booking everything and that's completely up to you what you do from here but this is the beginning this is the fun uh, where you pick the important important things these are the first three big decisions and uh, we loved making these decisions and we're looking forward to moving on with our process in wedding organizing from tomorrow when we're going to start working with our wedding planner. So I'm very, very excited about um, that. I'm very looking forward to working with her and um, yeah, seeing where this journey takes us. But hopefully it will take us to like a great wedding day. And I want to take you guys with me. So if you're interested in um, weddings and you know wedding planning and you're planning your own wedding or you are you, you had your wedding but you're just enjoying watching other people getting married and preparing for it, then uh, please subscribe to my channel because I'm gonna show you so much more of this. I'm gonna show you our journey to the big yes. And I want to um, I want to film it all. I want to make you part of. Uh, the organizing pro uh, the process the budgeting everything that we do and how we do it so um this is just a video to announce our engagement and tell you guys that we will go down this road so if you're interested please um subscribe and like this video and leave a comment if you um if you're willing to do so that would be very helpful for me anyway and yeah i will uh, hopefully see you in the next video thank you so much for watching thank you so much for your support and bye